get the brush and oh my god I just dropped a lot cut oh I'm so dumb anyways hey y'all welcome back to my channel and um I know my setup is a little different today I don't have my fancy lights I'm just sitting in the corner of this room with natural light and like a lamp uh, because I'm visiting my in-laws for a few weeks uh, so it is what it is we're just gonna have to deal with it today what I wanted to do was talk about and kind of speed review several different sunscreens and the focus is going to be on a few different formulations of Elta MD sunscreens. Every time I watch, I, I've watched countless videos on Elta MD sunscreens and like the moment the video ends, all of the information just yeets out of my brain and every distinction between the different variations of Elta MD sunscreens just don't exist to me anymore. So now that I've been able to receive them and use them on my face. I finally know like some differences between this one and this one and that one. So I'm gonna share those with you and like my speed reviews, maybe some alternatives. And I also have this Color Science Brush On SPF that I'll talk about at the end. Before we start, I want to mention that these were gifted to me from Look Fantastic. This video isn't sponsored by them, uh, but they did give me a bunch of discount codes and links. So all of that will be in the description box. And in celebration of May, which is Skin Cancer Awareness Month, Elta MD is actually having a discount, a promotion on their products. And I don't know, for those of y'all who may have been stocking Elta MD for a while, you'll know that they rarely go on sale. So this is kind of a big deal. So I wanted to share that information with y'all too. Again, it will all be linked in the description. Now let's get into talking about each of these one by one. So first I want to talk about the UV Restore. This is an untinted, entirely mineral formulation. And so it has 2% titanium dioxide and 15% zinc oxide. All in all, that comes to SPF 40. It costs $36.50 for two ounces. Other than the mineral filters, the zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, there is one other like call out worthy ingredient and that's squalane. I think we all know what squalane is. If you don't, that's fine. But what <laughs> squalane is, is it's like a hydrocarbon which is derived from hydrogenated squalene. Squalene is a naturally occurring lipid in our skin. And all in all, it's just great for like barrier and hydration and all the good stuff, like essentially healthy skin. I'm perfectly fine if my sunscreen has absolutely no extra skincare ingredients because all of the like good skincare stuff before sunscreen is happening before the sunscreen. So like in my serums and my moisturizer and whatnot, but any other ingredients, you know, that's a nice plus. Next, let's talk about the formulation. And if I gotta be honest, the formulation of this is not my favorite. <laughs> it has more of like the traditional sunscreen texture. So it's a little thick, it's a little pasty, it's a little draggy, a little dry, and it definitely does have a white cast, unfortunately. Before you try a sunscreen or before you watch reviews, it's seriously impossible to tell how a white cast will be for a completely untinted sunscreen because that's all up to the formulation. But as you can see in this application clip, uh, it's significant. <laughs> it's definitely not the worst I've ever had, but even after rubbing it in, you know, it's noticeable. I'm gonna pump some out just like a little bit on the back of my hand and rub it in so you can see the texture. So you can see it's like not super liquidy, uh, but it's also not very thick. It is it is like a sunscreen lotion, like a traditional one. And then as I rub it in a little bit, um, it works in fairly well. It's even, uh, it, it has like a soft glow to it, but I know the lighting isn't the best for this, but when I compare from like this hand, which had the sunscreen and this one, which didn't, one of them definitely looks a little more ghastly, uh, a little more blue. So yeah. And y'all saw that on my face too. I'm gonna use this, I'm happy to have it. It's a perfectly effective sunscreen. The coverage in the film is like even from when I've used it, but this is a high-end sunscreen, right? It's $36. If this were like a drugstore sunscreen, I would, you know, be more open to recommend it. But since it's such a high price point, like personally to my family, I would maybe recommend something else. So if I could offer a couple alternatives for completely mineral, untinted sunscreens, uh, my favorites are the Biosense SPF 30 sunscreen. Y'all know that I really like that one, the all zinc one. Um, another all zinc one that I like is the Coco Kind. SPF 32. That one is like, it, it, it's drugstore, but it's still pretty expensive. It's around $25 for 1.7 ounces. But the white cast on that is not bad at all. It really rubs in well. And if you're open to having a mixed sunscreen with both a chemical and a mineral filter, I love the Dermatology Broad Spectrum 45. That one has 12% zinc oxide and 
7.5 octanoxate and it just has like a really lovely lightweight lotion texture. Next I have the Alta MD UV Elements. This is another all mineral sunscreen but this one is tinted so yes it does have a tint. It's SPF 44 and that protection is made up of 10% zinc oxide and 5.5% titanium dioxide. This is the only sunscreen out of the three Alta MD ones that I'm talking about today that I've actually used up like, an, look at how, oh my gosh, yeah, I've actually used up an entire one of these and um, I really do enjoy it, clearly, right? So this is another $36.50 for two ounces. The pricing of Elta MD sunscreens are like very standard, <laughs> like in terms of price per ounce, but anyways, $36.50 for two ounces. The texture of this is really, really lovely. It has a true like tinted moisturizer texture and I mean that in the way that tinted moisturizers aspire to be because this has fairly significant coverage for like a sunscreen. It's definitely not sheer. It's closer to light coverage. You can see it actually covered up a lot of my um, my like acne scarring. It didn't cover them, but it blurs them for sure. And the main thing that impressed me so much with this is that the, the t consistency of it is so smooth and even. There's no separation of pigment. There's no separation of textures. It is so consistent. <laughs> the finish of this sunscreen is pretty satin. It's not, you know, like super greasy looking, but it's not a flat matte. It really does remind me of how the skin glows after putting on just a moisturizer. So I clearly really do like this sunscreen and I'm happy to have another one in my life because I want to keep on using it. In terms of extra ingredient callouts, this one does have one. It's sodium hyaluronate, which is a humectant. The whole draws water in and is great for hydration and all that. The tint of this matches my skin very well. If anything though, it is a little bit dark. So here's some of that squirt it on the back of my hand. It, it, this one has still a little bit of remnant white cast from that previous UV Restore. So you can see the tint as it's blended out. You know, you can see how if you have fair skin, this is way too dark for you. But on my light, medium, bordering skin, it works very nicely. Yeah, so a few seconds later, there we have how that sunscreen is looking and comparing the two hands again, um, that really brought the tone of this hand back to my original skin. Okay, last Elta MD sunscreen I have is the UV Daily Broad Spectrum 40. So this is the only combination sunscreen I have to talk about today. It is composed of 9% zinc oxide and 7.5% octanoxate. It's $32.50 for 1.7 ounces. Now there are some things with this ingredients list. Firstly is that the third inactive ingredient is isopropyl palmitate, which has a cause DNA acne score of four, which is a little concerning for me because I have extremely acne prone skin. <laughs> Besides the isopropyl palmitate, I didn't see any other ingredients that could potentially cause a problem for acne prone skin. There is a good ingredient call out, which is sodium hyaluronate. I've already talked about that. And in terms of like the formulation, this contains petrolatum as a second ingredient and dimethicone as the fifth ingredient. Let's talk about the formulation and the texture. This one comes out um, a little more like separated looking than the UV Elements does, but granted the UV Elements has extraordinary smooth consistency. The Tinted UV Daily really is a lot different from the UV Elements. The texture of this UV Daily one is so light. It feels very wet when you are first applying it and just that texture also makes it feel cooling. So to repeat the things I've said in more sense, it comes out whipped, but when you're applying it, it is super wet. And then the finish of it is quite dewy. So that's personally not my favorite kind of finish. I do have like normal leaning oily skin. And so I do get shiny by the end of the day. And to start off with this much shine is not something I usually prefer to do. The texture though, is really good. And that is kind of like what I expect with combination sunscreens. You get the benefit of enhanced like smoothness and lightweight texture because you get to include those chemical elements. But also um, you have the blue light and the extra UVA protection from the zinc. I do like this. I'm like contemplating now. Do I like it more than UV elements? I'm gonna say no. I still prefer UV elements. Coverage level of UV daily is sheer. It um, doesn't nearly have as much coverage as UV elements and UV elements I can actually completely sub out foundation usually. Let's pump out a bit of the UV daily so we could see that texture. You see that whipped texture and very thin, very thin. 
watery. And also you can see that, you can even see here that the uh, coverage is more sheer than the Elements was. Again, this is um, maybe not the best tint for you if you have a fair skin tone. I anticipate that this would look very orange on you. And the finish of it is very dewy. I know that it's still wet because I recently pumped it out, but the dry down actually ends up looking pretty similar to this. If I can offer an alternative, may not be surprising to any of y'all, but I love the Dermatology Tinted Moisturizer, Tinted Sunscreen. It's the SPF 46. That Dermatology Sunscreen has, again, 12% zinc oxide and 7.5 octanoxate. The tint is a little bit lighter than the UV Daily, so that might be better or worse suited for you. The coverage in the Dermatology one is also pretty sheer, uh, similar to this, but the Dermatology one like feels smoother and isn't quite as dewy as the UV Daily. Lastly, let's talk about this Color Science uh, brush on sunscreen. It has a claimed SPF of 50. And the thing with like powder SPFs is that the percentage of filters just is wild. It, 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 you can't compare like liquid sunscreens like this to the percentages of filters in powders because also zinc is a powder. Anyways, so the, the percentage of filters in this is 22.5% of each titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. And the whole thing with this is like that you can like tap out some powder and like brush it on and all that. But the thing about these kind of things is that like I, I was tapping for like the longest time, even just on the back of my hand to try to get anything to come out and nothing was coming out. And so I was like digging in here and some powder was like at the base, but it just wasn't making its way to the top after a while. So I just gave up. Um, yeah, but a uh, way to use this is that the bottom actually screws off. This isn't, this isn't fair, by the way. They have some different color variations for this powder. So moving on um you can screw off the bottom and if you want you can maybe get the brush and oh my god i just dropped a lot oh i'm so dumb anyways lovely <laughs> what you could do is tap into the brush and then kind of replace the lid as i should have done and then uh brush that onto your face would i recommend this color science thing no um I kind of wouldn't and that's just because to be completely frank with y'all it is out of my price range. This is $69 and it comes with six grams of powder and at first I was like six grams that doesn't sound like a lot but I actually looked up how much the Bare Minerals original foundation has the powder foundation and that one has eight grams so if that is a helpful measure to anyone it was a helpful measure to me to kind of quantify how much or conceptualize how much six grams really was. It's actually quite a lot of product. So there are other like options for these kind of powder brush on products. I know that Derma E has one. So just pick one that you're comfortable paying that price point for because it isn't a standalone sunscreen anyways. It's just something that is nice to have to touch up when you're like already wearing makeup and you don't want to rub liquid sunscreen over your makeup. <laughs> my camera overheated and my battery died. So that's the sign for me to just end this video. I've talked about all the things I wanted to talk about. Out of these uh, four products, with price point in mind, there is one that I would wholeheartedly recommend, and that is the UV Elements. It's the tinted SPF that has that really nice lotion, like truly homogenous tinted moisturizer texture. And there's one that I could like half-heartedly recommend if you have the money for it, and that is the UV Daily. The texture of this is just so cooling and watery and, so, and pretty nice. So I do like this one too. You have to consider that the tints on these are like a little darker than other tinted sunscreens that I've tried. So if you have a light medium skin tone or a medium skin tone, then these will be awesome. The other two, the like Restore, which is the untinted one, which had a white cast, and this Color Science one, I don't think are worth it for the price point is what I'm gonna say. I hope that was helpful. If you have tried any Elta MD sunscreens, definitely let me know which one is your favorite, what your experiences are with any of the ones that I've talked about or even the ones that I haven't talked about. I know I didn't try the original like UV clear one, which is 
kind of similar to the UV Daily one in terms of being a combination sunscreen, but it also, it also has niacinamide in it. Anyways, I have one friend who really likes that one. I just haven't gotten the chance to try it out myself yet. Any opinions? I want to know them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Remember that y'all are my treasure. Find the beauty in every day, but most importantly, be kind to yourselves. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!